Good evening, Paya Abota. Um, today, we're going to talk about a very, very exciting topic. My the documentary is currently ongoing and um, it's currently making a lot of waves about Ohe and Ilefe. A lot of questions were asked, so today I'm going to straighten those questions out. Uh, but before I do that, before I do that, basically there are some issues that uh, rise up uh, um, quite uh, quite some few hours ago on the Great Beneath Descendant page as regards uh, an argument where fought, uh, some persons said um, the, uh, the Uzamans are Obas chiefs or um, Ugisos chiefs. And uh, I, I of the opinion said that the Uzamans are not a Hamoba in the real sense. So I, I want to reiterate such statement. The most important thing is not there is no sentiment about history. There is no sentiment about history. History is events that have happened or that occurred in the past. There is no, there is no uh, sugar coating it. You have to say it. The way it is in the real sense, and that's what I, Mason Amogu Ezodua, stands for explicitly. Without, uh, I don't care who's those whose hearts are God. We have to put our history in the truth limelight. So I'm going to be reading from a book. It's the book that was dedicated to the Uzama chiefs. It's um, written by the. Yasser of Benin, the Uzama and the Benin monarchy. I think, can you see it? It's called, um, it's one of my collections of my work, Uzama and the Benin monarchy. It was published two years ago um, by um, uh, Chief Samik Ben, the Yasser of Benin. And um, uh, well, before that work was, before this work was completed, I was very privileged to have had a series of conversations with him. So he brought the prototype of the book out and we interacted our minds and we were able to come up. So we were discussing generally. It was through some of our conversations that it's one of the books that has enriched me in the past two, three years. In a matter of fact, it's one of my favorite all-time Benin books because I saw myself being part of the, 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 the creation stage of the book. And it was some of my inputs to Chief Sami Bediyasha of Benin that eventually gave birth to this book because uh, Ejoan, he has a way of discussing some historical books and was like, eh, eh, Ezodua, eh, 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 you know, you know, before I had believed that Ezomon's when Ezomon, Chief Ezomon was not part of the Ejoan from the very beginning, but he had to give me Susan point, we argued and argued, we argued and argued, and I had to see reasons why a power was correct and why I was wrong, and why other historians before him probably had said that Ezoma was not part of the original five of them, that they were originally four. So some of the issues cropped up today, and I want to put it very clearly, this is not about sentiment about history, all right? What I can assure you, the Zamans are not Oba of Benin's chief. In the first place, the reason is because it is very simple. The reason is because Oba Mami Agie, the Oba did not make them chief in the first place. The first chief tenancy title recorded in Benin history was the Yasser, the Yasser of Benin. It was the first chief tenancy title that was created by any Oba. And these agents had existed hundreds of years, even before. That was my argument. The Ejon had existed long even before the Ogiso ship started. In my documentary, when I was interviewed by Nebo TV, I had explained all these things succinctly. These people has been right from the very beginning of our history. It is through them that one of them emerged, who now became Ogiso Igudo. It was his grandson, Ogiso E, that now created the councils of elders in which he instituted these five of them in Tori, not as his chief, because in the first place he didn't create the title for them. They are instruments, they have become instruments of the, the, the entire stretch of our history. And we must get it very clear this is not about sentiment. 
these are the same people that went through the ladder all through the reigns of all the Ogishos, they were there. They were the one who ensured that the present dynasty of the Oba of Benin continued. And we must give them that respect. All right? Today, these people might not really understand the power that they had in the eras because I'm, very, I'm quite close to Chief Olia. I used to tell him that. What happened? You guys were so very powerful. If for the fact that the modern complexity of the kingdom no longer recognizes them as that very powerful does not mean that history do not recognize them as that very powerful. They were very powerful. And they cannot be classified amongst the Obas chiefs. Now, in the hierarchical order of when you want to give, when you have to give the breakdown of the Ehaimoba, all right, the, there are two classes of Ehaimoba, Ehaimonogbe, Ehaimonohe. Ehaimonogbe is headed by Omangwe, while Ehaimonohe is headed by the Iyase. You don't see these elders classified under these two classes of Obas chiefs because they are not. They are not. <laughs> Do you know what a chief is? That a Genobama, that is why they are the only people outside the Enige, because the Enige are dukes, that has palaces, that has quarters. There is Oba's Palace, there is Oba Market. There is Olea's Palace, there is Olea's Market. If Olea wasn't that powerful in the past, it wouldn't have been weird in that power. You can't see Yasser's Market or Yasser's Palace. I will have a man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Palace. But right now, I don't want us to dwell so much on this. I wanted to reiterate it. I want to read something very specific from this work so that people will understand that um, in the second one of our brother, I respect him so much, but when we tend to disagree on certain matters, I, I try to let him know that there are no sentiments about history, not because you feel that um, this is how it should be. It isn't like that. History are potent. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to read um, an excerpt very quickly. Um, very quickly. All right. The law of primogenition. People should understand the law of primogenition. I'm going to read from this book. Ogiso Riagba had just been enthroned as the 23rd Ogiso of Igodomigodo and would have been the last of the Ejionwe kings. He had seen the good and the bad aspects of the system as a member of the royal council Ogiso. He actually began this silent planning for a return to hereditary subsection when he was still a member of the royal council. He ascended the throne of Ogiso benefiting from the gerontocratic arrangement of the royal council and was aware of the difficulties in the way of the required change. He was able with Liti Ofo to gain the cooperation of the Aegeonisen. No one referred to them as chiefs or a hymen because at that time of history there were no a hymen. All right? He was able with Liti Ofo to gain the cooperation of the Aegeonisen and the Uwara members of the royal council and few of the principal members of the royal council who were eligible in future to become Ogiso in their turn. That means in the old of the days of Ogiso, there were three types of cabinet members. We have to start divulging history. There were three cabinets of, of the palace members. First, the Ejionise. There were five of them. Secondly, all right, um, the Ugoron members, obviously, um, this our group is called Ugoron. This is where Ugorons were history keepers. They were the wisest people in the entire Benin Kingdom or Igudumigo to land. They were the wisest. So they were the wisest people from Ishish quarters that were assembled, that were assembled rather to be part of the cabinet members of the Ogisos Palace. All right. Now we have the Dionysian. We have the Ugoron members and the Royal Council of the Royal Council and few of the principal members of the Royal Council 
who were eligible. So that means some the other aspects were those who, who will be eligible to become Ogiso in the future. These were the three cabinet members of the Ogiso Council. All right, the Ejonisen, the Uwaron, and those who have the potential of becoming Ogisos in the future. These were the three categories of the cabinet members of the old. They were not chiefs. At the time of Ogisos, they were not chiefs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say, with the help, okay, with the help of the Uwara members, he was able to secure the help of powerful individuals in the kingdom and powerful priests like Ohenso and community leaders. Strongest of all, he was able to enlist the cooperation of the priests of Enimidu. When Ogisoria eventually summoned all the necessary and qualified people into the Ogbaha Council, he called on all the powers of their ancestors and especially on Enimidu, the progenitor of the Idu Edo people, to stand by him as he took the decision. He, as a reigning Ogiso, then went on to promulgate the law of primogenition. And all members of the royal council, including the concerned family members, the priests and the Edionise, who were themselves involved in carrying out the instructions, including the nobles collectively, sworn before the shrine of Eimidu as follows. Now, this is where I want to read from. Now, six, oh sorry, I made a mistake earlier that it was five. Six laws during the days of Ogiso Riyagba was promulgated. Six. Six. We must understand the six. All right? The six laws were promulgated. Law number one. Upon the passing on of the king, his elder son would succeed him on the throne. All right? Just like the edit of the Shekiri in 1979. So this is our own. This is the first promulgated law. There are two. One that was promulgated during the time of Ogisori Agba, and the second one was promulgated during the time of Obaiwakwe. But this was the very first law that was promulgated that guided our succession or, our, or the laws of primogeneture. Now, number one, upon the passing on of the king, he said that son would succeed him on the throne. Number two, if he did not have a son to succeed him, the nest of him in the family would succeed him. Number three, in the placement of the son, or in the search for a nest of kin for the placement, the agent would bear absolute responsibility. Now, during the time of the passing on of the Ogiso and the installation of the new Ogiso, the agent must be in charge of the kingdom. The agent, not a high man, not chiefs, agent, the others. We know that when you come of age, it becomes a John, but this a Johnison had a specific rule. All right, they had a specific role rather to play. Now, law number, let me read number law number three. In the placement of the son or in the sexual nest of king for the placement, the John would bear absolute responsibility. Now, number four, upon the death also of any member of the John, the reigning king would invite his elder son, the nest of king, as the case may be, for installation into the position of the diseased agent. So we should get it very clearly. The law that binds the throne of the Obar of Benin is also binding on the, the agentship of these elders. I don't, I don't know what, what you understand. So the concept of, well, our brother was saying that when an Olia dies, it is the Oba that makes Olia. There is already a provision that every other son of Olia must be the next Olia or the next of king. The law has already provided it. I think when the family members are present to who becomes the next of Olia, then the Oba or Ibaseyo. Likewise, it is still the same agent that has a right, that has the promulgated right, right of crowning who becomes the next over. The law provides it. Law number five. Just as the Edeon would have the responsibility of maintaining the stability and continuity of kingship. Look, very, this is one of the, this is the most powerful. This law number five. He said, just as the Edeon would have the responsibility of maintaining the stability and continuity of kingship, so would the king be expecting and required to perform similar duties in respected in respect of a departed a John member. It is this law number five is so powerful. Listen, 
just as a John would have the responsibility of maintaining the stability and continuity of kingship. All right? So would the king be expected and required to perform similar duties. So the duty that these elders perform in ensuring the continuity of the king line is the same duty that is mandated upon the king. It's the same duty that is mandated upon the king to, to ensure that there's a continuity of the idiom. Now, the last law. The succession of the Aegean, as in the case of succession of the king, is the responsibility of the king. Look at, look at, look at the last point. He said the succession of the Aegean, as in the case of the succession of the king. So, the Aegean role that they play to the king is the same role the king plays to the Aegean. It's, it's a 50-50. So that shows that these people, they are not ordinary chiefs and should not be de denigrated to be classified as one. Yes. They are not seen as chiefs. Yes. They are not misrepresented as chiefs. Yes. They go to the palace. They have a function. These are all recent ideology. In real sense, they are eventually now called Uzamas. They will not go into the palace because they don't have a role to play in the palace other than some very they were going to the palace not like they were not going but on a specific role that they have to play for the kingdom all right they have to play for the kingdom so let's not get all these things all twisted by using english to mix all these things up a jones are simply a jones and they are not classified as obash chiefs the reason is very simple they were not made their title was never given to them by any king, whether Ogiso or by look, look for any book whereby it was stated that Ogiso this created Olia as a title, or Ogiso that created Eo as a title, or Ogiso this created Edohe as a title, or Ogiso this created Ezomo as a title. What you will hear is that at one point in the eras of this Oba. Uh, Ero used to be number three, but when it be, something happened, the Obana promoted Ezomo over Ero. But they were not, their titles were never created, never by anybody. Were never created by anybody known to history. Niawaro, Keti Keti Ade, from the very beginning of our history. Which we should learn these lines of nobles should be learned to be distinguished from the chiefs. They, they are not to be classified as chiefs because they are level high past chiefs. That's what I'm saying. They themselves don't know now. Yes, that's that's like a hand, like Tesma, like they were there, they ensured. That is why it was <laughs> it was practically impossible for a foreigner to have been a king of Benin. Practically impossible because they had one law, they had one mandate, ensure the continuity of the kingship. That's the law they had. And that was why when there was a vacuum of kingship for 70 years, they had to ensure that they had to travel, they had to look for the blue blood. They have to ensure that only the blue blood sits on the throne. That was why it was impossible for Evian, Evian and Ogiamie to sit on the throne because they, they ensure, they sworn an oath with their life that they must ensure only those, they ensure that only those who are of Oba, who are of the kingship line can sit on the throne. It was a very simple assignment, and that is why they had to send a delegation. That is why the Olia himself had to lead. That's why Olia himself had to lead the other councils of elders to look for the rightful owner of the throne. I've, I've said it, that while I so believe that there is no 
amount of guessing. It has nothing because of what I read. It is the experience I've had with understanding the complexity of our kingship. Convince me beyond every reasonable doubt that Kaladera has to be Oduduwa. The reason is very simple. The reason is very simple. Because of these nobles, because of these Ejion, they had only one job. Ensure that there is a continuity of the royal line. That is why when the Augiamen were trying to wringle their way to the throne, mm -mm, they did not allow that. Instead, they had to travel to as far back Ife to retrieve their son to come back and be the Oba of Benin. All right? And be the Oba of Benin. And don't also forget, there were in three cases. I tell people, I tell people that it wasn't technically possible for, for you to say that, um, for you to say that, um, um, for you to say that Oromia brought war to Benin as described by the Yoruba liars that Oromia brought war to Benin um, and they conquered Benin, blah, 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 blah. If truly, hmm, uh, blue blood means royal blood. That's what, that's what blue blood means. It's a real blood, like royal blood. Royalty. Now, it was, why it was impossible for why I believe that these stories were not true. If, for example, it was actually a foreigner that sits on that throne, let me tell you how Benin would have. Let me tell you how Benin would have terminated that line if it was actually that the royal lines, the present royal lines, are Yoruba. Let me tell you how it would. It was easy. Let me tell you. Now look at the chronology. They said Oromia brought war, defeated the Benin, and installed the son, Eweka. Beautiful. Let's assume Eweka was here. You left a one-year-old baby with foreigners, and the foreigners did not deem it fit to kill the one-year-old baby so that they can put their own person there to continue the lines of their throne. Oh, assuming that, okay, uh, Oromia still had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, relatives around, a lot of his army around to protect his is a year old or two years old or three years old son who eventually became Ewaka the first, assuming that that was also correct. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, um, assuming that is also correct, then Tedley, uh, after Ewaka, Ewaka had two sons. Ewaka had two sons, Wagwan and Ehemien, right? <laughs> this is the in three cases. Well, a lot, a lot of Benin people should take note. These are things you argue with. Wahwan had no son. The first son of Obaiweka, who became Oba Wahwan, had no son. Instead, he had a daughter called Princess Imadeyo. Now, he, Princess Imadeyo gave birth to a son called Prince Elegbe. Now, get this history very clearly. Get this history very clearly. If Oromia was actually a foreigner. This was the best time for the Benin to have replaced the, the royal lines of Oromia and completely shut it out without shooting gun. <laughs> without shooting gun. This is it. Oromia gave birth to a son, Eweka, in Benin. Eweka had two sons. Not, the first son was Wahwain. The second one was Hemien. The first son of Eweka, the first, became the Oba. But when he became the other, he had no son of his own. So, but he had a daughter. All right? He had a daughter. And that daughter was called Princess Imadeo. That daughter had a son called Prince Elegbe. For some of us who are from Orion, we know the story. Prince Elegbe went going to find the Ugu kingdom and all that. That's another talk for another day. Now, if the story of Romeo was a foreigner, all the Benins would have done, the, the, this Aegean, would have supported Prince Elegbe to be the next Oba because Prince Elegbe would have only been maternally related to Romania and paternally probably not related to Benin. That would have been a silent way of eliminating, but they said, no, it is only those who share in the paternal lines of the Ogisos 
that must sit on that throne. Instead, they had to favor Prince Elegbe's grand uncle, which is his grandfather's younger brother, Prince Ehemien, to become the Obar of Benin. Common sense. Because they sworn before Emidu that they must protect the continuity of the kingship rightly. The major reason that we still have a kingdom today is because of this agent. And they should be they should not be denigrated by giving them a chiefly rank. They are not chiefs. They are higher than chiefs. <laughs> they are. This is not about let's speak the truth in the purest form. They are not chiefs. They are higher than chiefs. Okay? So, it's about, the, <laughs> this is about what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the, 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 the little thing I said I was going to talk about before we go to the topic of today. Now, I did a documentary. The documentary was poised. See, a lot of persons might not really appreciate some of the works that I've done for a dull land. They will get to, they will get to, they will get to, um, they'll get to appreciate the works I've done for Edo land probably in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years. See, till date, most Benin historians, they know that Uhe is different from Ileife. But why they choose to classify Uhe as Ileife or to replace Ileife as Uhe is, or not, is the Benin word for Ileife? It's what I don't understand. It's a bit my imagination. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know where, what they were thinking. Uhe. It's not Ilife. Uhe. Egene de omen wana so. Ogi so you have. Omen I ask you one here. Those who can sing song. Why do you sing one man? Let me bring you people life. In one head deno. Ogi so you have. Ogi so you have. That was long before a Kaladera or Romeo or Duduwa story. Ogi story you hear. Ogi ke ku heri. O monosia e wana do hiuvi. That means when they used to go to Ohe, they used to spend tens of years. They used to spend ten years. They used to spend five years. They used to spend long time when they go on a pilgrimage to Ohe. So suddenly, the Benins changed Ohe to Ilefe. Why? Let's speak the truth so that the truth the truth will set us free. Let's speak the truth so that the truth will set us free. Uhe is not Ileife. If you make Uhe Ileife, you therefore not give the power to the only of Ife. And that's because the Benin mistook, the, Be the modern Benin historian mistook Uhe for Ileife, and that's why. European historians started classifying all on it as the organ organ and new hair. Oh hair is not in southwest, is not east of Benin, present area of Kogi State. Oh hair. Now, Gisowa, you were in there. Our bar, Nikau, the earliest Oba. They all went there. The last Oba that went to Uhe was Oba Y the first. It was Oba Y the first. So, we rope tie ourselves by not telling ourselves the truth. The truth of the matter is that when you said Ife, eh, is the same thing with Uhe. Eh, that means you are giving. Another person's power to the only. Don't forget, it is on the record that the Obas of Benin were paying homages to the organ and Uhe. That means we are saying that Oba of Benin was paying homage to the only of Ife. <laughs> That's what it means. That's the reality because, in truth, there was someone, a deity, a chief priest, or whatever. I will unveil the truth now that the Obas of Benin paid tribute to until there is an authority. From that place, no Oba 
was crowned. A lot of persons are not aware that the Obas of Benin used to derive power from someone. There was someone that was more powerful that the Obas of Benin used to pay homage to. Mm. That's what that's what the documentary was trying to let us know. That first, it was not the king that the Oba of Benin was paying homage to. It was a chief priest. And that chief priest was called Oren Enuhe. That chief priest was a chief priest that propitiated the shrine of Paidu. Now, understand this thing. A lot of persons, no, we are not born at Uhe. The creation, the Benins were not born at Uhe. We were created in our land, in Edo land. We were created in Edo land, but there was a great flooding that happened. Even the, the, the word, in the word Atlas, it was recorded at the post Adamic cataclysm. The flooding that took that almost wiped the population of the world. The Benins were already around when that flooding happened. So Paidu led his people up north to a place now called Uhe. It was in that place at Uhe that Paidu, all right, became their first established ruler. And he created a shrine. To worship God Almighty. God Almighty was called Orene. <laughs> it's a pure. Orene is a pure Edo word. Verenede. It was from the time of Obaisigi that Edo stopped using Orene, that Osa, crypts, Osalobo, and all that. The word Osa, Osa, Osa. I'm not saying that Osa wasn't existing. There was Osagbaye and all that. Now, that became more frequently used as replaced by Oren. All right? Now, the shrine that Paidu created, he became the first chief priest, a priestly king, priestly king, priestly king, a dua personality. It's a king, is the leader of the people, and also the proprietor of the shrine. It's called a priestly king. It became the first priestly king of, of Benin, of Ohe. Mr. Fosa if you have any issues, if you have any issues about my history, you are not comfortable. You can either ask questions for clarifications, or you can ever go away from my platform. Otherwise, you know I can. It's easy for me to block you. All right? It's easy for me to, very easy for me to block you. So don't distract us. Allow us to talk history. Present day is belief. All right? It is pre present day, present day, uh, present day Kogi state. It's present day around the Kogi state. How, how do we know it's present day around Kogi state? It's because of the information that the Europeans gave. That's why we are aware. They, they gave a very. Hello? Mm -hmm. So. It's because of the information they gave. They said that how did they prove it? That the Oba of Benin paid an homage to the, the great potentate of the interior. All right? And that which, uh, to an ancient city that lies beneath the great waters. The great waters in Benin is called Ohiri. It's River Ninja. Kogi is at the lower bed of River Ninja. They gave the description of where that city, the ancient lost city called Uhe, was. They gave a direction that it was not east of Benin, not east could have been Ilefe. But they also said the, that the city was behind. It was a great potentate of the interior of a city behind the great waters. Owarotuti, the base of the great water, and that's Kogi State. Around the area. We don't know which of the present area of Kogi State, but Paido had a dual had a dual role 
He was the chief priest of the shrine that he created for the Uhe civilization, what I would have called Uhe civilization because it wasn't the only Edo people that was there, even part of the Yorubas came there, the Igbos came there. So he was the first man to, to he was the man who created the shrine to worship God Almighty and that shrine was called Organes Shrine. It was a shrine where they worship God the provider, that's Organe, that's what Organe literally means in Edo. It, eh? uh -huh. So, and eventually, he was the first chief priest of Duhe. He was the first chief priest of Uhe. And he was also a king of the people. So he's called the priestly king of Organist Shrine. He had a dual role uh, being the chief priest and being the king. Just like the present Oni of Ife, he also has a dual role. First, he was a chief priest, and now he was upgraded to be a king. So that's what Paido was. And now, Subsequently, when the Edo's eventually left, Paidu died in Uhe. Paidu was not buried in Edo land, but he was born in Edo land. In the present day, Godo Migodo land, he was born here, but he, was, he died there, was never buried here. Now, understand this thing. Now, when they were living, when these three sons were living, accompanied with others, his daughters and his grandchildren, one of the grandchildren is called Esan and all that. So I will talk about that some other time. So some of our trouble is some brothers, so that I can be able to tell them that this is how our histories are connected. When he was coming back, he had a sceptre bearer, the staff of authority. The major reason Udo could not defeat Edo in war is because of that staff of authority till date. The elder son, the eldest son of Paidu actually died at Udo. All right. It's the second son, which was Efa, the third son, which was Emehi, they died in Benin, Edo. The reason why the capital did not leave Edo to Udo is because of these secrets. The scepter bearer of Paidu was called Azamanuhe. The scepter bearer. He took the scepter of Paidu, the staff of authority, and took it down with Efa and Emi until Agis Ogis Ogis Umikboba Ogis Umikboba and Abayeva. He called it Upini, the place of heavenly pageantry. That became the capital city. And that was why Udo could not defeat us, even if. Udo were the eldest, was the eldest among the three sons of Paidu. So that is why the other two sons of Idu that survive is Efa and Emeya. And every Edo, every Edo son or daughter are either Akash children, Efa's children, or Emeya's children. The Urobo people. A progenitor of Aka. They came from the Aka lines of the three sons of Idu. And that is why they refer to us the date as Aka, because that is a line of the sons they came from. Having said that, the scepter still exists till date, the staff of authority. Still exists to date. There are secrets. I typho, but you have to understand. Ubinin existed long before I go to Migodo. I've explained that. You people have been following me for a while. You should know Ubinin has a statement. Don't forget all those lies that all those Yoruba are lying that Ubinin came from the statement. Ubinin, the first name that we were called is Idu, Idu's land. After Idu's land, at one point in history, we were called Otefa, Otemei. In, in that documentary you read when I was reading from a book, Otefa, Otemei. After Otoridu, the next name this land was called was Otefa, Otemei. Because these were the sons, the, the second and the third son of Paidu. And after that, this land was now called Ubini. It was after Ubini that the land eventually now 
was not called Igodo Migodo. So it couldn't have been Le Binu. So, anyway, Sha, iron sharpened iron. With time, we begin to get some of this history bit by bit. Ubini is older than the term Igodo Migodo. Ate do Ubini ne ake a Migodo Migodo. Ake de bedwa evusuna ya ate Ubini. <sighs> mm. hope you guys have enjoyed today's class it's amazing <laughs> funny enough Ubinin, I've said it a thousand times Ubinin means a place of heavenly pageantry a place of heavenly sorry calls are coming through Ubinin means a place of heavenly pageantry let me shock you people again <laughs> When the Kaladera left Benin, yeah, first of all, yes, it got to Wotan. That's where Igariwa killed the whole story. No, no, no. It's Ubini, U-B-I-N-I. -I, not U-B-E-N-I-N. -I -N. It's U-B-I-N-I. -I. Now, when the, when the Kaladera left Benin, look at it. Now, last year, I was I was working with a brother for which to produce a documentary of a Kaladera. Now, that documentary will cost between 5 to 10 million. Alright, Amami Vier do not say your to produce a masterpiece documentary that will change everything. Although I've not been able to raise our funds, but I will raise our funds in about a year or two. So I don't need to tell anybody again to bring the money for such magnificent program that will change the face of our history. I mean one Zayo now, but my gosh, one Zayo, you understand? So but let God continue to bless us so that we have resources for we to tell our story the way. Now, I am going to sponsor the project of a Kaladera, the documentary that the ancestors have been putting in my mind. Shoot it, shoot it. Because there, you will understand. Because then, we are going to visit some secret places that a Kaladera visited that, that is still being preserved today, right to even the Kogi area. Mike cannot use a Kogi, but then I get tough. Now, you understand? But you must understand this thing basically. When the Kaladera left Benin, yes, he went to Owaton first. After Owaton, he got to Okada. There's a place he got to in Okada. A lot of persons are not aware. He got to Okada. He, he did a U-turn. And after Okada, he went to Iroa. After Iroa, he did not go to Ileife. <laughs> now a lot of persons are not understanding. He did not go to Ileife. He went to Uhe in Kogi State. Uhe, eh, you carry. The Kaladera did not go to Ileife direct. The <laughs> Kaladera did not go to Ileife direct. He went to Uhe first. There is a chronology of the Gala people that they received the Kaladera. Well, I'm working with the professor. He chatted me up last year. Yeah, that was last year when I told him I was doing a project. He said yes. It is in our record as a gala that the Kaladera first of all came. It was from here, it was from Uhe, the Kaladera went to Ilefe. It is, that is where the beginning, that is where the beginning of the history of Ilefe started. Because the Kaladera went with the blessings of Ogen and Uhe. And he was also a chief priest. Of organ and rule her shrine. So, connotatively, it was also an organ and no hair because it was a chief priest of our organ and no hair. <laughs> so, when you say Oba Benin appellation is Ovi organ and no hair, you are referring to Ovi Paidu. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I wanted people to understand because the first person to have had the courage of that title organ and nowhere is paidu and every other person who became paidu who became the chief priest also had that title of organ and nowhere all right <laughs> so he colored it at one point of his history was also organ and nowhere before he eventually went to ilefe and he took all the traditions of both benin and uhe to ilefe now get this thing clear all the all the travels all the history 
of what a Kaladera brought to Huhe is recorded in Hife history. And that history that is recorded is called the Ikedu tradition. The Ikedu tradition, ask any Ife person, why was Ikedu tradition, the original tradition of the Ife people, why was it not published in a book? A, one of the most brilliant professors of Yoruba extract, it's called Professor Akinjogbe. Professor Akinjogbe wrote so much about the Ikedu tradition of the Ife people. The Ikedu tradition of the Ife is the first history, is the first tradition that was practiced by the Ife people until Oduduwa or Ikaladera brought his own tradition. Now, in that Ikedu tradition, they recorded some of the things that Oduduwa brought to Ife. Why was that work left unpublished? Why was that work? Why was that? Why was that work left unpublished? Is a question that we should ask because it holds the truth. The 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 the, the fragment of that work is on the social media. Brazit, sorry, is on the internet. Ikedu, I K E D U, written by Professor Akinjo, being unpublished. All right. In that work, that is when you will know that he had referred that the original title of the kings of Ife was called Ogene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it shouldn't shock some of us. Some of us are quite aware already because we already spoke about it. Now, in that Ikedu tradition, it was recorded that the original title of the kings of Ife was called Ogene. It's all gonna Yoruba word. It's all gonna Yoruba word. It is published explicitly on the Kedu tradition that the original titles of the earliest kings of Ife was not on. The on is a recent word. There were some, the Portuguese referred it as Organe. The old Yoruba people mispronounced it as Orone. Orone, I think they didn't pronounce it well. Instead of G H E, they wrote it as G H O. Uh, all right, it is called the Ikedu tradition. It is the oldest, it is the original tradition of the Ife people. The tradition that the Ife people kept. The tradition that they 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 were practicing before Duduwa came. So Duduwa came to subvert the original practice of the Ife people. But that tradition, the original tradition of the Ife people, is kept and it's called the Ikedu tradition. In that Ikedu tradition, it acknowledges that the original titles of the earliest kings of Ife were called Organa. An organ is a pure Edo word. Except the Yoruba wants to except the Yoruba wants to obtain the whole secret. <laughs> yeah, we fear would mm -hmm. Anyway, I haven't said that. I think that's about the clarity I wanted to make. I just wanted to clarify that because a lot of persons were beginning to ask, the do you mean that Paidu died? Do you mean that Paido was born? Do you mean that Paido was born in was born in Uhe? No, no, no. Paido wasn't born in Uhe. In one of Edo, uh, excuse me. Um, in one of Edo, Utobe Otalaka. Ivani anabidu. Ivani anabidu rame. Ivani anabidu. It's part of the legends of our history that Idu was born in Utobe Otalaka. That's what people don't understand. Some of, us, some of us were not too acquainted with towns and villages, earliest towns and villages. One of the oldest towns in, in Benin City is Ogbe. And Ogbe is different from Alaka. They have boundary. There is Ogbe, there is Alaka. There are different there are different quarters of Odo in Aoba, Ogbe, Alaka. Ehihimi na ya bu Ogbe, 
Naya Bogbe, or Luga Nehim in Naya Bualaka. There is an interjunction, there is a meeting point between Ogbe and Alaka. Uh, if you remember Ukboni, no le before Oba Palace with the other side that that is now heading towards um, the Oba Market. There is a shrine there called Ogbe Nalaka. A Ogbe Nalaka. Nalaka. Nalaka is different from understand this in these are four terminologies. Ogbe Alaka. Ogbe Laka. Ogbe na alaka. The meeting point between Ogbe and Laka is called Ogbe na Laka. That question is lost to time. No one can tell who sailed Paidu, but definitely. History only remembers those who, who took the bull by the arm. That is what that means is that is the same is co-joined. Organ and no sa. Organ no sa. That is like the God Almighty. Alright? So I'll just sit back. If there are questions, let me take two, three questions and let me round up the segment. Benedict Beni have here tomorrow is on Monday. Work calls. Mm -hmm. Work calls. For some of you asking, how do you get the book? If you want to get the book, just let me know. I'll find a way of getting the book to you. Uh, Uzama and the Benin Monarchy. All right. Uh, uh, James Moses. Good evening. So if there are one or two questions. Just ask them quickly. I like doing my segment very short, short, sharp, 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 sharp. I just hit and pop, 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 pop. Understand? I just hit and I just didn't move till next week Sunday. Sharp, sharp. Mm. There are no connections. There are no connections. There are no connections between Ifa and Efa. Efa is a person. Ifa is a divinity. I don't know. Maybe there might be connections. I don't. But to my knowledge, I don't think there are connections. Ifa is the divinity of the Yoruba. Iha is our own divinity. All right? And he has been existing for a very long time. Because I've told you that this title, Oliha, Ole Iha, has been existing even before the Ogiso time. So Iha, the divinity, the probably the, the oldest divinity of the Edo people has been existing right from even the creation of the Edo people. So... Um, Iha is an equivalent to Ifa, but Efa is a person, one of the sons of um, Idu, Paidu. Yeah. I've forgotten her name, uh, Queen. Um, I've forgotten her name, or oh, the mother of Ikaladera, and that's the mother of Oduduwa. Uh, uh, Ernest, history cannot remember who is the father of Idu or who fathered Idu, but what history can tell us is that Utogbo Talaka, Ewaniana Bidu, I Fred Siva, I can't really tell how much is the book because I was given I was given a free copy by Chief Sam by himself. I was given a free copy, so I think at that time it was two thousand, but I don't know, that was two years ago. So I don't know the amount for it now. Uh uh, you can't call now, you can't call now, but in, sh in short period of time, I will have an open line where people can call and ask questions. But for now, no call yet. I'm still building my page, all right, uh, so that people can come and learn history. I really need to worry now. Except those who did 
remarkable things uh, uh, except those who did remarkable no we don't practice ifa it's iha the equivalent yes when you give her pray you always mention i think the effort people greet laidu because they are the direct descendants you know there was this argument when i was arguing with some unscrupulous or Giamian people i told them that i told them when i was arguing with some unscrupulous or Giamian people i said them that how can Giamian be claiming ownership of a do land when the people really owns it and we're not going to claim a do land Egbabe Laiso or Lamogun or Lavieze or Laloke. The two families that can claim a do land is Efa, that is Laidu, and La Mehi. Emehi. Because I'm not saying every Benin man, see, in other words, whether you're Lamogun, whether you're Alaiwo, whether you're Alavize, we all came, whether you're Lamogun, whether you're Laiso, we all came from Egbe Mehi, Be Egbe Efa. That's where we all came. And some also came from Akado. Yes, let's just say we came from the entire Benin population of three branches the Aka family branch, the Efa family branch, and the Emehi family branch. All right, these are the three branches that every that every Edo that uh, uh, um, so th these are the three branches that every Edo man came from. That every Edo man came from. So if there are families that will come at the Maya, Mafio Ton or Ba, Mafio Ton or Giso, it will be a Bemehi Efa because. <laughs> they are our progenitor. They are our junior progenitor. Our senior progenitor is it the Paidu. Then we all came from these two persons or these three persons. No, I think these two persons. I was Ak Akawa Amamwa. Okay, Aka had children, obviously. Aka had children. But Aka died in Esanland, present day Esanland or Edo not. But Aka did not get to Benin, present day Edo South. It did not. Obviously, he died before. He died before the voyage. Mm. He died on their way to Benin. Aka was buried in either a sand land or a circle land. That present day, I do not or present day, do central. But certainly, he wasn't. He didn't die here. He wasn't. But he had children who eventually went to inhabit present day Udo. But the metropolitan city, the Benin city, was inhabited by Ma and Efa. So, so that is what I'm saying. Thank you for having you, Mr. Ch uh, Chief uh, Roberto. We have to put our history in the right light. Like I've said, take my words. If there is any family, take it clearly, that can claim the ownership of a do land, it is the Lamehi and the Laidu. I like putting. It's not. I'm from Lamogun. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, every other tribes came from. Came from other every other Uhuya came from other Egbe Efa Egbe Mehi Agmo Yakiri Agmo Yakiri uh -huh. either Mehi or Efa even the Obas the Ogisos. Ephesians of us trace our our generation to hundred generations of five hundred generations ago. At the tail end, we either be Efa or Mehi. Mm -hmm. Understand? So that's that. That's basically. Let's put our issue in the right perspective. So not all those family. A family, yeah, our Gamia family that is about one thousand years old is not claiming ownership of a do land. I have few ton of bar. Over families, there were families ni Buedo. 
What fa what greeting? Are they greeting? Yeah, I will get me. Is it not like I just proved to you that the only two families that can claim ownership of a doe land that in a in a boy do is Emehi, Lamehi, Alaidu, Efa. They were brothers. Uh, Ogefa is a head. I uh, heard there, there was a Mr. Efren or Roberto. I think maybe some of this day I have to feature you in this program because there are some part of history of your family that must be straightened out. I'm aware that the eldest, the eldest sons of the Ogefa is the Ogefa, not Zeben. All right, not Zeben that choose Eben. Then the other younger one is Ogefa no Mwekbo. But however, history tends to remember no, no Mwekbo over no Zeben. But however, no Zeben is your Kaikbe, is the head. Ogefa no Zeben is the head of the Ogefa family. I think I'm correct. If I'm not correct, you can correct me there because I think I read that in. Uh, a nine workers work on the, um, the evolution of Benin chief testing title. Wherefore, no more bo, or we not draw over a guy, and I have no red bo, or my guy or so. I don't know how you people used to do that, but I know they, they have a magical bag that nobody till date knows what is inside the bag. A boy, why I have a bo, but though when I am, you can invite me no time, man, because that man unlocks several other history of our land. But we know, no red bo, no my guy, no more. Mm-hmm. Okay, now. Nah. Uh, beautiful, my brother. Humans of Adoland. So, if you know who on your mag, But I think I will have to invite you in one of the program if you have an extensive, because right now, it's all about, if we don't tell our story, if we don't tell our story, then a lot of persons are start telling, which, there, there are no sentiment attached. When some of our brothers try to attach sentiment about history, that's why I brought the Uzama, First, let it straighten out. Those Zamans are not Obas chiefs. They were not Ogiso's chiefs. They certainly are not Obas chiefs. They are Idion. They are higher than normal chiefs. First, it's a straightened history because Erio Ye, Erio Ye, I sentiment here where Obama me again. It's a simple thing. They are on their own. They are, they are, they are not a guy who know you or a guy who know be. They are Uzama. It's even denigratory. I heard the president Eru does not does not want to so want to be called Uzama. They are a John and they shouldn't be classified as a guy. You understand? But what I'm trying to tell, I want to chief only that. I I'm supposed to. There's a way I will put myself in a way that you don't see me as chiefs. I'm not trying to be segregatively. I'm not trying to bring discrimination into the royal the people shouldn't get me clearly but i'm just saying that i'm just saying it the way it is yeah they, they, they are elders they have been there you understand so this is only as uh, this is one of the only as uh, so the history should be put right that's my headache that's my that's my head that's my own it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't uh, deflates um, other people's authority and all that, but it should be put right. I mean, over Yawa time, because I heard there was a discrepancy because no more boy is more recognized in the palace over no Zeben, but however, no Zeben is the Okaibe, is like they heard of uh, um, it's the it's the Okaibe of the family. So let it be known. If there's anything tangible that any of us has, has taken on, if there's anybody, like if the arguments are coming that yah yah do yah feel turn over, we we yah 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 turn in in the first place. It's a question we have to be asking ourselves some very intellectual questions in the first place. We yah 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 turn I just told you, uh, uh, I just told you that emani yah otedo. And they see her families like do and la mehi. So we should where his stroman our we salute. Yes, they, they, they are not royal lines, Lamogun, 
and the Lysho. These are the two royal lines amongst the body 54 families. But two families must always be recognized as a standard because they have been very dear. They are the beginning of every other families in Edoland, and that's La Mehi and Laidu. I stand to be corrected. Corrected, corrected. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll give her no more. No more. Oh, I'm coming. Let me. This brought a big dispute into the family. Okay. But there's a present. We'll give her no more. Oh, now. There's a present one. There's a present. We'll give her no more. Oh. Understand? It's a, I, I, I always see him doing the quay. He's a very young, fair, fine boy or fine man. <laughs> very fair. There's one, I mean, you know, who, you understand? It's exciting. I hope, I hope if I'm, I, I should be, I will, I will, any, any of the FA families are here, please chat me up. I'd like to, i like to know more about that family. It's, it's an exceptionally brilliant family. And then uh, I, I used to see the FIMA house somewhere. Um, if you see the way they have kept their house, it's still very historical. I like to visit there and ask one or two questions something because these are the secrets that we must ask. The last one I do is different. Light show is the is the greeting of the Ogisos that was instituted by Ogiso Erebo. This family greeting was instituted by Ogiso Erebo. But uh, Uhunatwe was was instituted. Uhu, there were already families existing, but it was not differentiated by Uhunatwe. You, you understand? But Laidu, Egbenogitu Laidu na or Efa family. Uh, yes, give a normal boy. He's a very fair, fine boy. <laughs> I used to say he commands a lot of respect too because of <laughs> it is not about age. That's why I tell people it's not about age. If history has favored you. Forget it. But you know, most of these people, we are not have issues about some of these ancient figures. They say, I do a mwik bin and boto. They are supposed to be the one gingering us, you and I, that obanya ima ya sewebo. You go and fight all of them. They are not gingering us. Instead, they are all very self centered. That's why I have any issues. Otherwise, when you have, if I had come from a family that commanded so much enigma, of historical, if that's why I like my friend Osazer Digging. The Osazer Digging used to carry the enigma of the Edigin family because of the role they also play in the history of our land. <laughs> I'm, I'm always loving. If, for example, I'm from Ogefa, in Yawa Adriko, every Yawa Adriko, every two, two weeks, I'm also Toha. <laughs> Do you know what it, it means to come from the lineage of these very great ancient figures? <laughs> so, I envy some of these persons who shares who come from these lines of great ancient figures and they don't know. And we that are studying, we it get very angry to see that uh, to see that our people are not taking they're not taking the history of their family very serious. Imagine if I'm from uh if FA, for example. I for don't write like 1,500 pages. I for don't write one encyclopedia of FA the Puta that my I do. That, oh, oh my, oh, my I do. Uh, oh, my I do. But my boy do. <laughs> you understand? So, and they are not giving credence to all those. Sorry, not all of them, Jam. Some of them are. <laughs> some of them. <laughs> some of them. Some of them are actually their heads are correct. Grieving credence or some useless Ogiamia to not start claiming ownership of the land when there was never any time in history where all these people Egboge Nediama is not claiming ownership with a boge ne tege tege when I and emerge. Lagesan, Lagesan. The patriarch of the present lines of the Ezomont is from Esa. It was called a Henwa. I think I've talked about this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. If you people have family meeting even in Europe, keep to it. You should not 
what I'm against in that family meeting, you should not be discussing only burial and marriage. That's what most of these family meetings discuss. On on we are away naming ceremony. We are on our child dedication. We are on our marriage. We are on our way. We are coffee. These are the basic things they discuss in some of these family meetings. But what I'm expecting these families to be discussing is Effa played a remarkable role in the history of Benin. Naya, producer, with director. Okay, uh, anybody, a historian of Yeredo, Gatia, Gary, one million of power, no baby, no kind, Effa. These are the things that we go by how to garner knowledge. And during your family meetings, you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be telling yourself the history of the old, of your family. Hello, sir. I know. I know. Anyway, why I was saying, I think we've exhaustively run through today. I'm, I'm quite very excited. I'm very happy that um, we're having times like this where we can interact with ourselves where we can tell ourselves the um line line igun i think line is igun uh okay you can always get that now from their books almost every book used to carry benin morning greetings let me see what it is here i can't find it so uh so now uh, just richard if you take this one to your next meeting please we had we call it be. Some of them we need burial we ceremony. Oppa, I have a tally quick be. Let's 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 let let a be talking about how can they produce books to sustain the history so that a monogi keg be now in the next hundred years. Ni ayem in a a bogi aya. Let me read this. Uh, what this brother has wrote. Okay. We give a no more book. Still have um, still have a dog. Still have. His daughter is still alive, the last born, which is my grandmother, younger sister. The elder daughter never allowed any other member of the family member to visit. Navia Street off Mission Road. I think um, if we can if we can have an arrangement with Bomos and Mike or Tobo, please shut me up. Let's see if we can we are not, let's see if we can go and meet her if she's still alive to tell us a bit history. She should still have a little bit history of her family. Let's keep some family history of these people, please. You understand? Let's find a way of not just only reuniting and keeping the history of this family. Nigga, we. I'll be talogbe. It's for our own good. Otherwise, our children will we wake up and not have anything to talk about. Because even the generations that are alive now, my name born in the next 1500 years. Okay, I'm going to Street, yeah, Marvis Street. So, no, so I haven't said that. Why I always say, I think we'll be rounding up now, so I want to thank all of you. Who came online to join this our program for our programs our programs are usually on sundays and it's usually interesting we usually talk about different histories and i'm sure that uh, we learn something from this discussion and um, and all the subsequent discussions a whole lot of persons have really learned a lot using my platform and i'm really grateful that um, we're using my platform as a platform for iron sharpening I am. Uh, um, iron sharpiness, iron, and all that. So I'm really, really, really grateful. I'm thankful to all of you. You guys are wonderful. Like, um, um, let's nag him when do bottom. Yeah, yeah. We will not ma. 
nine or two year do mu agbon yaye so any any like minded persons who also also want to get involved in all of these are all welcome all right are all welcome for us to sharpen ourselves to understand our history it is lovable for us to have a platform like this for us to talk about history and talk about it in the purest form so i'm grateful to all of you i'm grateful to god and our ancestors it has made it quite very possible for us to talk about history the way uh, <clears throat> no, no 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 definitely i just danezo i just i've answered that i've answered that there's nothing like only oh, before Odudu are returned <laughs> when Odudu came to Ifre, the first titles the earliest kings they only go a did time for books come they pull for books the earliest kings of Ifre were were known as organe i've explained that all right why well, yeah, i so i'll see all of you um next week sunday by 7 30 pm don't always forget we are always here and uh, to discuss history all right so why i was all about talk about you said